Hey guys, Ash here coming at you today in Late Shadow Legends. Boy, if you're watching the day of, thank you for tuning in. This is my third video of the day, man. We had a promo code earlier and we had a cool collab with Deadwood Jedi talking about live arena. Very, very fun stuff. In case you missed those videos, go ahead and check them out. Actually, I'll save you the time here, guys. Let's be real. Uh, it's Game Geeks Spring with two S's there. So Game Geeks Spring is a, this is a promo code. You don't have to watch my other video. But speaking of other videos, really quickly to get this out of the way, I have a new channel that launches today. Uh, it's called Raid Shadow Legends Champion Guides, I think. I think I might shorten it to just Raid Champion Guides. Either way, though, uh, the thing is, I get dozens of requests for Champion Guides every single video that I put out here on the channel, and I can't, I can't do them all. You know, I can't upload 10 videos a day, but I thought to myself, what if I made a, like, two-year mission to review every single champion in the game? <laughs> That's what I want to do, a lofty goal. So I want to do that on a new YouTube channel, and I'll, I'll kind of probably probably remind you guys from time to time about the channel, but I'll have it pinned in the uh, the pinned comment today as well if you want to check that out. I'm going to be releasing a quick 5-10 minute guide on every champion, so they're not going to be super in-depth or anything like that, just showing the masteries and the builds, etc. Uh, I have Armager and Shield Guard. I'm going to start with Uncommons, and then eventually we'll have this like nice and organized by, by faction and by rarity on the playlist on that channel. And then I have a promo code channel as well where I share not just... Uh, promo codes that everybody can use, but also for new players. And I update you guys on download links in case you want to start any Smurf, any, any alt accounts, uh, maybe work on your, you know, your referral program with yourself, right? Anyway, guys, I've been getting a lot of requests for a Dark Fae auto team. I decided to make one with no legendary champions. That way you guys can go ahead and make substitutions where it makes sense for you. Right now on this Doom Tower track, I cannot overstate, I cannot emphasize enough how important, if you're one of those players that ignores Doom Tower, you know, Almost all the time, 90% of the time, it would really, really behoove you to not ignore during the Dark Phase cycle. Even if you can't clear, you know, all the stages of Dark Fae under, under normal difficulty, uh, or if you can only clear, you know, stage 40, for example, of Dark Fae under hard difficulty, it would still do you very well to farm that, to use your super raids, use your multi-battles every single day. For me, at least, it becomes a massive priority. Doom Tower for me, I still do it every day. But I don't necessarily use all my keys and farm the boss every day, right? Like, that's how I treat Doom Tower. But during Dark Fae, that all changes. I'm trying to do it every single day. I might miss a day or two, but I'm trying to do it. Because Lethal Gear, before we get to the team really quickly here, Lethal Gear is so freaking good. Crit rate plus 10%, ignore 25% of enemy defense. So this is one of the most sought after sets in the game, not just because it's a better version of Savage because it gives you the crit rate in addition to the ignore 25% of enemy defense, but you could run 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 uh, energy worth of Fire Knight and still not walk away with any really good Savage gear because it's RNG. So this, at least, you know, when I farm Dark Fae, I know these resources are going right towards exactly what I want, lethal gear. So it gives you a little bit more, I don't know, say in the matter, if you will. It's a crapshoot in Fire Knight, and, and it's still not a reason, not forget the double negative, not to fire Fire Knight, uh, farm Fire <laughs> Not to fire fire, right? not to farm fire. <laughs> it's still a good idea. It's still my favorite dungeon to farm. However, I always go for that lethal gear as well. It's free after all. You get the keys anyway every day, right? And not much is free in Raid Shadow Legends. Okay, so so guys, I'm going to show you this run. Talk a little bit about each champions and the role that they're filling on this team. Talk about possible substitutions as well. Then the most important thing, I'm going to show you the team setup, and then I'm going to show you my fastest team, including legendary champions, just to give you guys different ideas at you know how a team can be constructed especially if you have maybe any of those legendaries that I'm using. So let's talk about the fastest champion on this team, and that is Deacon Armstrong. So Deacon Armstrong, really important to this team, but he can be subbed in with champions like Nick Mothar, like Lysandra, even on the earlier stages of, of normal difficulty, a champion like Diabolist, someone who has AoE turn meter control. There's a lot of them out there, uh, but even a champion like, you know, Nethril or something, right? Someone who can, or or Razin, if you, if you build him fast enough, right? Someone who can fully deplete the turn meters of the enemies. You can even use a nuker uh, like Biggin for for example, with this Molten Slag ability, just be careful of counterattacks. Anyway, uh, so Deacon Armstrong is fastest, then followed by Allure is the second fastest on this team. Now, Allure, we're going to use her A1 and her A2, or excuse me, her A2 and her A3 ability on the first two waves, but on the third wave, we're just going to only hammer away with her A1 ability. She's really the most difficult one to replace on this team, and if you have multiple Allures, Allure is one of the only epics that I've actually built two of. Geomancer, Allure, Inquisitor, Shamil, I think those might be the only champions that I built two 
dupes of for epics off the top of my head. But anyway, it's going to be very important that things go down just the way that they went down right there, right? So that's why, again, the customization comes into play a big, big time in terms of setting up that team setup. So make sure you stay tuned for that portion. But from here on out, it's fairly easy. Uh, let's go through the rest of the champions here. Uh, Archmage Helmet, who you just saw lose a turn to fear there, uh, is great, right? Great in this dungeon, but he could be replaced as well. If you have Ninja, you can run him in there. Uh, Ninja obviously won't have the increased speed, but the idea here is to CC the enemy team. He has that stun on the A2 ability, and he has increased speed, which is great, right? If you have a champion like Nekmothar, you don't need the increased speed, so obviously things will change a lot, but having that stunner in there plus the speed, increased speed buff, uh, I really like. Royal Guard on his A3 has Terminator Manipulation, and it's very, very underrated. Uh, obviously, he can debuff with a decreased defense on his A1 as well, and he has that uh, that, that hard-hitting, of course, A2 takedown ability. And then we have Flyja, who has a full Terminator reduction on her A2 ability, plus a lot of damage on her A3 ability. This is like a third mention for her in the last week on this channel. I'm a big fan of her, and I've been sleeping on another epic nuker too. Man, I received nine at last count. Nine comments on my best arena epic nuker video from a couple days ago uh, talking about me sleeping on an epic nuker who I haven't even built yet, so I'm going to save that one for a surprise for you guys. I don't know what to expect, but boy, a lot of comments for a champion I had never even heard of before. I'll give you guys a clue. No, I'm not going to give you a clue. I'll wait, make you guys wait for it. All right, so here we go, guys. Back to the battle. Not too bad. Around three-minute runtime, and things were really never in jeopardy, right? What I like more than a fast run in Raid Shadow Legends is a run that has a 100% success rate. Although, if you lose... It doesn't use a key, so it's not even a big deal, really, you know? This is one of those areas, kind of like Faction Wars, that, you know, if you fail a few times, who cares, you know? Just going to take you a few more minutes, but you can figure out the problem easy enough, usually, if you just go through the team setup. So here we go. Uh, even if you can only clear st uh, floor 40, heck, even if you can only clear uh, floor 40 of normal, you still should be farming this every day to get your hands on lethal. It's so important to get that artifact set, guys. So you guys can see the damage here. Obviously, Royal Guard leading the way, uh, but just a really, really well-built, all-epic team here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that team setup, guys. So for this squad, we have, obviously, Deke. He's at 266 speed on round one. We're not doing anything with the customization. On round two, we're not going to be using his A3, which is fills the turn meter of all allies, fill, uh, decrease the turn meter of all enemies, and then the extra turn. We're not going to be using that. We're not going to use his A2 either. And then on round three, we're going to open up with the A3, which will lead into the A2. So this will be your opener uh, for round three. You might as well go ahead and just make it your opener in first choice, just to make sure. And then we have Allure. She's going to be nothing on round one, nothing on round two, and on round three, we're going to shut off the Temptation, we're going to shut off that Hellish Blaze, and she's only going to go in with Opener in Default on Psychic Whip, her turn meter control on the A1 on round three. 263 speed, again, 266 on Deke. 263, uh, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this yet, but the speeds are not super important in terms of you don't have to have exactly 263 or 266 on these champions, the order that they take their turns is really important. So you want the turn meter control champion going first, followed by Allure and so on and so forth. We have uh, Flyja at 175 speed. On round one, nothing's changing. On round two, we're actually shutting off her A2 and her A3 ability. And then on round three, we're going to open up with Righteous Evocation. That's an AoE attack, fills the champion's champion turn by 15% and heals them by 15% if the damage inflicted on this attack is critical. So it's critical that we have 100% crit rate, unlike me at 90. Do it as I say, not as I, not as I do. <laughs> so, uh, but either way, we're going to open up with the AoE nuke to kill the mirrored champions, and then we'll go into Crushing Eternity, which has a 100% chance of fully depleting the target's turn meter. Uh, Royal Guard, Again, on the first round, nothing's going to change. On the second round, I don't want to use hamstring because I want it off cooldown for round three, which I'm going to open up with hamstring. Hamstring, uh, four times at random, each hit has a 75% chance of placing a decreased speed. It's, each hit also has a 75% chance of decreasing the entire turn meter by 25%. Again, turn meter control. It's all about turn meter control. Archmage Helmet. On round one, nothing's changing. On round two, we're going to shut off the time slip ability so he has it fresh off cooldown. On round three, that's going to be our opener. Uh, I think my hunch is 
is we might just be able to open up with the A3 anyway with the increased speed, increased crit damage. We might be able to kill everybody anyway. Plus, that will help get the crit rate of Flyja over 100%, right? Uh, Royal Guard's at 191 speed. Flyja's at 175 speed. Archmage Helmet is at 235 speed, the third fastest on the team. The nuclear speed doesn't matter that much uh, on this particular strategy. So there, there it is, guys. That's the whole setup. Uh, I'm going to show you all the champions really quickly just in case you want to see, you know, what kind of artifact sets I have on them. But, okay, we have triple perception here on Deke. Accuracy is obviously super important. Turn meter control, right? On all these accuracy, on all these champions, really. Uh, so, again, we have a crit damage and a savage on uh, Flyja. Flyja. <laughs> Archmage helmet we have here with uh, 235, 100, 167. 252 is a little low on the accuracy, I will say there. I also have him in a shield set, which isn't required on this team. Uh, but this is an old build of Archmage, but it still works. We have a lure here in a uh, immortal and divine speed. Just kind of a haphazard assortment of gear here on a lure. Most importantly, again, is the accuracy and the speed on a lure. You can go ahead and take a quick look at the masteries on these champions too. If you're interested, Royal Guard has a reflex set. Uh, I forgot he was even on reflex right now, so it's not, again, mandatory, but we'll just get more procs out of either of his skills. Usually I shut off the A3, but that's certainly not going to be the case here against Dark Fey. So he can get by in reflex is fine as well. Uh, we actually have him with... Uh, didn't notice we have him flawless execution. I think that's fine. Uh, so that is the Royal Guard build. Uh, let me see. Anything else that I didn't show? Masteries, just really quickly. We have... I don't know why we have Helm Smasher on Archmage Helmet. I guess it's for wave support here, but it's definitely uh, nice to have, but not mandatory. Uh, it's great uh, here on Flyja because she has the, uh, we use her in the arena as well. And then uh, Deke, you guys can see, I just went down the support tree and uh, went with Warmaster as well. Uh, let me go ahead and show you my 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 main team if I want to really speed run uh, Dark Fae. I, I think I have it all ready to go here. I'll show you guys just in case. So here it is. It is two allures, Ninja Trunda and Nekmothar, okay? I think I have this team all customized. I'll show you really, really quickly, just in case. But it's going to be the same idea, right? Nekmothar, not going to use his A3 on round two, just like uh, uh, Deacon Armstrong. And then we're going to open it up. You don't have to have it as an opener. It's going to open automatically. But either way, we're going to open up with spirit, we, uh, speed weirding on the A3. And again, that is turn meter uh, increase by 30%. Extra turn and increase speed on everybody. Ninja... We're going to use him. We're going to shut off that freeze ability, the A3. Then we're going to open up with that as our control in the final wave, final round. Trunda, we're going to open up with Forge Rhythm in the final round, and we're not going to use it in round two. And then Allure in round three, we're going to shut off the A2 and the A3 on both of our Allures. So there it goes. This is the team that I would run on uh, Dark Fae 140 or 120. Why do I keep saying 140, man? Uh, Dark Fae 120. Very, very effective squad, obviously. Uh, and it's nice to have two allures on this team, you know? I mentioned it earlier, but boy, Allure is a champion that's, you know, although she her use rate will be mitigated on the new dungeons, which kind of sucks. You're not going to be able to be used against the new Fire Knight. Uh, but she's still such a good champion for control that she's worth, in my opinion, building two of. So let's go ahead and get to the boss. I would let you guys go till we get there, but there's only a couple. There's only a couple troops left here. Let's get them down. But hopefully this video, if nothing else, motivates you guys to actually use your super raids and your multi-battles every day or as often as you can remember to, right? Because it's just that that important to get that lethal gear, man. All right, so here we go. We're going to open up with Spear Weirding. We're going to come in with the A2 ability. That's a decreased speed as well. And then Ninja didn't even have to... Trunda just finished everybody. <laughs> Ninja didn't even have to go in there. But you guys get the point here. It's really easy. It's the same strategy, different champions, right? But now we have two Allures just hammering away with their A1s. I don't think Dark Fae's even going to get a turn against this squad, right? Because it's the same allure kind of cheese strategy. I also saw on Reddit a bunch of people asking about, I don't have it open right now, but a bunch of people asking about like how to do a team setup for Dark Fae. So this sort of, even if you don't have all these champions, this sort of strategy in terms of each round hopefully gets you guys thinking, not even just for this dungeon or just this is boss, right? But it just gets you thinking of how you can use 
the team set up AI customization in your favor strategically in really any dungeon, especially in dungeons like this, where you need cools to be off, uh, skills to be off cooldown, excuse me, and you need the order of operations to be just perfect. You might not want to use an ability to make sure it's off cooldown. You might want to shut off other abilities uh, in the final stage. So here you can go. You, you see, guys, this, this team is actually not that much, much faster. It's nice to have Ninja because he's the boss killer of Raid Shadow Legends, right? He goes pretty quick. Uh, but, you know, it's we're going to save, like, the all-epic team compared to the OP legendary team, kind of, sort of. It's not going to be that big of a time difference, really, you know? Uh, and especially, as I mentioned, if you scale up those stats a little bit, you're really going to be able to tackle any floor with even the epic-type strategy. Uh, it's basically the same no matter what kind of champions you're using. But for me, this is the tried-and-true method of beating Dark Fey, guys. And here we go at 2.30... Five, come on, man, finish, finish. Okay, there we go. At 2.35, uh, we are done there. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Hopefully it helped some of you guys out. And as always, take care, guys.